Far Cry has been around since 2004, but the success of the series as we know it today is largely owed to 2012's Far Cry 3, and its sequels have continued to be a mainstay franchise for Ubisoft ever since. There have been plenty of ups and downs for the series over the years, both on screen and behind the scenes, and to that end, before we jump into the latest entry with Far Cry 6, here are 11 things you probably didn't know about Far Cry. start with an easy one. The first Far Cry game was actually a PC exclusive developed by Crytek. Their big thing was Crisis, and more recently the horror-themed Battle Royale Hunt Showdown, about an ex-Special Forces soldier getting duped into stopping a mad scientist from turning all of humanity into an army of mutant monkey men. Even before that, though, Far Cry began its life as a not-so-simple tech demo called Exiled Dinosaur Island which was shown off at E399 as basically a last-ditch effort by Crytek's founder for them to make it as a studio. What started as a measly 15-minute demo at the end of the show gained enough curious passers-by to become a two-hour demo, and ended with Crytek becoming NVIDIA's newest partner for pack-in benchmark software, and as such, synonymous with cutting-edge graphics. There's a reason that Can It Run Crisis became a meme. Ubisoft bought the rights to Far Cry in 2006 and immediately put out a combo port slash reboot. Is that a port boot? Report? On the original Xbox called Far Cry Instincts, which was a reimagining of the PC game but with an even sci fi ear bend. Like, you get full on super strength and heat vision and stuff. Also, a lot of the openness of its levels had to be pared down for the jump to console. It spawned a couple of sequels and additional ports, but they weren't that great. The Far Cry 2 team, however, leveraged the tepid response to Yubi's initial Far Cry follow-ups to experiment with new mechanics and systems. The narrative director straight up said that they were able to take more risks on the project because expectations for the franchise were so low. Abandoning the mutants and super soldiers of the original games in favor of realism and player agency, Far Cry 2 laid the groundwork for the core pillars of what the franchise has become. Some of those innovations were already years in the making. The ability to smoothly transition out of stealth and into a firefight, for example, or to have NPC buddies rescue you from the jaws of death largely stemmed from its creative director's frustration with forcing a game over screen on players if they were spotted during certain levels of the original Splinter Cell. While all its ambitious ideas mostly came together in the end, though, the Far Cry 2 development team ran into some major hurdles, to the point where testers had only been able to successfully complete the game a single time until a week before the first Master Disc was ready. While many of the technical wrinkles that were evident in Far Cry 2 were smoothed out for Far Cry 3, the final version that was released in December of 2012 was a very different game from what was originally envisioned. Instead of the lush tropical setting of Rook Island, Far Cry 3 players were initially going to battle pirates in an abandoned resort, complete with a golf course and dilapidated amusement park rides. However, by 2010, most of the original developers had left the project and a new team pivoted towards the jungle island we're all familiar with. Even its villain, Voss, who went on to be such a popular character that charismatic villains became a hallmark of the series, was originally just a big, muscly bad guy stereotype named Bull. Another iteration saw him as an arsonist named Pyro, who was a bit closer to the final version portrayed by Michael Mondo, but covered in burn scars. Ultimately, the writers felt that Pyro was a bit too gimmicky and that Mondo's performance was strong enough to carry the character on its own, and they definitely weren't wrong. One performance we didn't get to see in 3 was from Elias Tufexis, the voice actor who played Adam Jensen in the most recent Deus Ex games, who was originally supposed to star as your character Jason Brody. Yep, that's right, the smug frat boy trust fund kid was originally going to sound like this. I never asked for this. It's fairly common knowledge that Power Glove, the Australian synthwave duo who created the soundtrack for my personal favorite Far Cry game, Blood Dragon, also did the music for the 2011 Splatterfest, Hobo with a Shotgun. But what you probably don't know is that there was originally going to be a crossover between the two. Unused audio files discovered in the PC release revealed that Rex Colt's arch nemesis, Colonel Sloan, had a pair of cyber henchmen called Rip and Grinder, aka the plague from Hobo with a Shotgun. It might not have come together in the end, but you can still hear echoes of their theme during a late game combat sequence. Far Cry 4 was almost a direct sequel to 3. Well, okay, 
almost might be a bit of a stretch. According to Far Cry 4's executive producer, there was about a week during early pre-production where the development team considered continuing Jason Brody's story on Rook Island and maybe even bringing Voss back from the dead. But apparently that all went out the window once somebody said they wanted to ride an elephant. A South American or Russian setting were also in the running before the team finally settled in the fictional Himalayan country of Karat. While a lot of Far Cry Primal can't be called historically accurate, I mean, sure, humans may have domesticated wolves way back when, but bears and saber-toothed tigers seem unlikely. But some of it got pretty close, particularly in its approach to dialogue. Characters in Primal speak a version of what's known as the Proto-Indo-European language, and the development team brought in scholars who've spent their lives studying it to create three varied dialects of it so they'd get the sound of our prehistoric ancestors just right. Of course, no one's actually heard that language in some 20,000 years, but if the eggheads say that's what Mega Great Uncle Thag sounded like, I'll take their word for it. Far Cry 5 pulls a lot of inspiration from real locations in Montana and the northwestern U.S., but you might be surprised, as I was, to learn that the giant statue of Joseph Seed in the middle of the map wasn't just a weird fictional monument to the main bad guy's own hubris. Well, okay, it is that, but also it's based on a real thing, which feels wild. It's inspired by Our Lady of the Rockies, which is a 90-foot-tall statue of the Christian Mary that sits on a chunk of mountain in Butte, Montana. And those are 11 things you can now say you know about Far Cry. Man, part of me still wonders what Adam Jensen Brody would have sounded like, but it's probably for the best that we'll never know. For more on Far Cry's latest outing, though, check out an interview with its developers on bringing an urban setting into the mix for Far Cry 6, or our recent hands-on gameplay impressions. For everything else, you're already in the right place here at IGN.